Hey, good morning, you guys. Welcome back to Southern Latitudes. After a nice holiday break, oh, I feel refreshed, but I actually have a really large to-do list now. <laughs> things that I, I've been thinking I need to definitely do to prepare for winter. And one of the things on my November to-do list that I haven't done yet, actually it's okay in December, even in January, if you uh, don't get to it. So um, I want to address different leaves on certain trees so um I, specifically i want to address deciduous trees which are the trees that drop their leaves every year but as long as i'm at it i thought i would start here at the barbados cherry tree which is not deciduous maybe it's semi deciduous but um what happened let's go ahead and explain is that the hurricane has uh put with the first hurricane ian put a tilt this way on my barbados cherry tree and then we straighten it back up and, and held it with ropes. As you can see on this side, right? Pulling it back this way towards us. And um, then Hurricane Nicole came <laughs> and pushed it this way. So I do need to straighten it back up there. Jack's gonna help me with that at some other point. But as you can see, I wanted to point out as long as we're doing something on leaves today and look at the leaf drop on this tree. So it has really been under some stress. Of course, it has, that's a hurricane, a lot of hurricane stress. Plus its roots have been messed with down there twice in one year. I'm surprised it is as beautiful and green as it is. Now, normally it goes to sleep in November, so I'm, I'm waiting for it pretty soon. But um, after we had a cold snap and it did drop all of its blooms, now it seems to be kind of coming back. We've had a pretty nice November. Look it up there. I got a cherry red up there. I've got lots of green cherries there. I got one going red here. All sorts of new buds on there. So, oh yeah, even way back in there. This tree is doing pretty good because of all the water it received during the hurricane but um, we just need to now strap it that way. So um, it used to have a T-post in there when it was younger and of course I pulled it out and didn't th think I still needed it, but it must not have very deep roots. It must be uh, more of a shallow rooted type of tree. I don't know. If, if you know what the roots look like, let me know, but um, because I've not actually seen the root system, but I can tell you the way it was blown around this year, it's, it's struggling a little bit, but it'll recover. So um, we just need to get um, some more here. Let me show you how we are doing this. Of course, you can see we have tied to the fence, which I don't love. This is not the best idea because you can snap your four by four or even a two by four if you choose a two by four. But um, we also had these, um, I don't know what you call them, like uh, tie downs or something. This one, you can buy them in all sorts of different lengths. One foot, two foot, three foot, four foot. This one is only about a foot, I think, maybe two feet. I can't remember. We looked at so many that day, uh, but I want to say it's a foot, one foot. And it's a little eyelet right here. And then a big corkscrew going all the way down to the ground. And it did its job. <laughs> the tree did not go that way. Um, but now I have a big open gap here. So anyhow, Jack will get in here. Oh, look at these. Aren't they so pretty? I can't believe how many cherries it has put on since the hurricane, even with stress and dropping its leaves. This is a really good producer. I really love this tree. Okay, now let's get to the other trees that I wanted to show you. Okay, so right behind me is the tropical peach tree. Now this is deciduous and it needs to go dormant for the winter. But if you're in Central Florida and even South Florida, pretty much anywhere from like the Tallahassee line and South, and I guess if you carry that across lower Texas and California, if you're following me uh, and you're in the 9B down there, um, you may have, you know, all sorts of stone fruit and they are, let, let me see if I can remember all of them. So peaches, plums, mulberries, uh, nectarines, uh apricots anything in that category apples also need to um, have a dormancy period and then they come out every spring and put their leaves out and the fruit the blooms and hence then the fruit if they get pollinated 
So um, my peach, in fact, all of my uh, stone fruit here are not going to sleep. They are not going into dormancy because they still have all their leaves. It's still nice and warm. It's very confused. And uh, so we're going to help it just a little bit to get colder first off and then um, go to sleep. I want it to put its energy back into the roots and go to sleep. And it's not doing that, making all the photosynthesis. And also, um, of course, pick your trees. Maybe you're up in a, in a wonderful temperate climate and you can pick whatever. You have a lot of variety of apples and, and plums and stuff I can't do here in the subtropics and tropics. So, um, you know, that's great. And you probably don't have to do any of this. I know it's kind of controversial to strip your leaves. Some people like it, some people don't. Some people use uh, blowing off of the leaves um, during the season after the fruit is set, they blow off the leaves and then they can get uh, better color like on their apples, for, for example. Um, you know, gives it a little, maybe a little bit more red or peachiness or something like the blushing, whatever you want to call it. But anyhow, I pick plants with low chill hours, very low chill hours. Uh, I don't know if it'll say right here. Um, of course not. So this is a tropical peach. It doesn't even say it there, but that I know what it is. Oh, it says it down here. Tropical sweet peach. I thought it was somewhere. So um, this should be really nice for us. It's a nice, big, healthy, young tree. And I'm hoping to see blooms, if not set fruit this year. And um, I'm going to go ahead and at least... You can do what's called stripping. It, actually, it's easier to do from this side going backwards. You see that? Stripped so much easier going backwards. Ah! You can either strip the leaves all the way off, or you can do what's called a lollipop and just leave some at the very end. Um, actually, I saw a video uh, while I was preparing for this one, I, I saw a video, this is called lollipopping by um, a guy that had a cannabis farm. So um, I never heard that term for this in this situation, um, but that's okay too. So I'm just going to go on down, pull it. Also, you should see it is naturally doing um, the losing of its leaves, but... Um, not fast enough. If we have a nice cold snap, I would like it to receive those chill hours from the whatever future cold snap. I'm going to leave this little one because that's a little side branch. And I'm just going to keep stripping them. A couple more things I wanted to address with you now that I've stripped it. I wanted to show you, this gives you an opportunity, at least while they're young, to see where things might develop badly. See how these two are crossing? They actually come off of the same um, same main stem right here off of the trunk. And they're pretty much going in the same direction, right? But I would like to actually have this part become stronger, one of the main things. And then we can have lots of branching out right here. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that. Also, it'll keep it from rubbing on this and allowing infection to come on in to your tree then you anything going inward like for example this one is going inside and it's going to go right to this stem right here so you'll want to take out ones like that this one i'm going to leave for now i've been trying to do what's called the goblet method i had a video on this back in uh january i think so um, i'm probably just going to take out this little one and this little one I'll leave that one. It's high enough up. And I think we're pretty... Oh, this one right here. You see how this one's going to go right up into the branch? Let's go ahead and take that one off. And you want to do that pretty close back to the, the main stem or the stalk, branch, whatever you want to call it. So I've already pretty much got, did the goblet thing to this guy. Uh, I think we'll leave this one for now. I think we'll leave everything else but it does give you a good chance to go around and look at your tree see if I can clear out the center right here 
and uh, give it plenty of breathing space, you know, for the spring, plenty of space for air to come in and uh, good airflow. Oh, I forgot to get this top one, but I'll get that in a minute. And because um, I was thinking of a couple things. So that was one thing. Secondly, I want you to make sure you leave all your leaves at the base. That will just turn into excellent mulch, just like you do with but, uh, bananas. I almost said bunnies. Oh, that's awful. Um, I said that, almost said that because that's bunny shavings underneath it. <laughs> I was thinking of that. That's um, pine, pine mulch shavings and then also um, the feces and urine in there. So, okay, so I leave my leaves right here. I may rake them a little bit closer to the base of that trunk, but then, you know, we're gonna leave that that way and that'll break down and become better mulch. Also, another really, really smart reason to leave, um, to strip, at least when your trees are young and they're small, if you keep them small, you can keep doing this, especially if they don't go dormant on their own. If they go dormant on your own, don't do it. If you're, um, Maybe elderly and frail, don't do it. I'm not saying this is for everybody. Um, maybe you just don't have the time, you work a full-time job, don't do it. It's okay, it will survive. I just want, when that first, we don't get but maybe two or three cold snaps here in where I live in East Central Florida. And so when I, when I do, I wanna make the most of those chill hours Maybe you get 10 a night or, you know, the next day it's still in the 40s. I think you can still count the hours in the 40s as well. So um, I want to get this plant as cold, or tree, as cold as possible. Let the chill hours get on it and, um, and start um, doing their magic. You know? The other thing I wanted to say is by, um, I believe like January, late January, February for sure. I want to start putting on my um, sprays uh, for the trees. So I usually do a copper fungicide spray. Sometimes, it, well actually last year I did it and I'll do it again this year. I also add neem oil with it. So I'm putting a good coat along the, all the bark here and um, on all the way up. And then uh, what that does, it, that allows me to treat the tree so I don't get fungus all over the leaves, you know, as because we're in such a humid area. Fungus can be a problem. Does any disease and insects can be a problem. The neem oil works, you know, against hopefully the insects and, um, you know, keeps a healthy tree for you. And uh, you want to do that before you start getting um, buds. I don't have, oh, well, like this will be future buds, right? And um, so before these would go to bloom, you wanna definitely have your spray on the tree, doing its stuff, have time to dry, and you don't want to affect any bees, pollinators, anything of that sort. You don't wanna affect the fruit. So the best thing is to put, put it on there and you can use all organic and um and feel good about that <laughs> so that that's what i like to do uh right before the the blooms start emerging like in march over here i have an avocado tree and this is going to stay evergreen for me all year long and even in the winter even when it's quote unquote dormant it's the leaves are a little bit waxier and it it should not be losing its leaves Unless it's st stressed, sick, dying, something like that. I was just looking at that. Looks like a little rust on that. I do try to spray this tree down a little bit too. It deals a little bit more with sooty mold. Look, there's some rubbing. Something must have come down and hit that right there because there's not an actual branch. I do go through multiple times a year. See when things cross, I try to take them out. And um, look, there's more crossing. Right here, the, this branch right here is crossing and rubbing into this one. That can bring infection into your trees. The black sapote is doing good. It just got transplanted a couple months ago. Um, it's always had this strange, um, I guess, some sort of nutrition, nutritional deficiency. Uh, so, uh, Obviously, I didn't fix that when we mulched it and um, fertilized it. But anyhow, 
so I'll address that later but this one also is not going to lose its leaves this is more of an evergreen over here oh look at that that's another reason to get rid of this you see that I believe that's fungus right there so this one will, will not get lollipopped it will get stripped completely down next All right, you guys, that turned into a really pretty goblet. Um, looking good. It would benefit from some spray in another month or two. I'm going to let it go dormant first uh, or helping it. But there you go. We have a, a tree ready to receive all the cold air and chill hours it can get. This, oh, by the way, this is a sun red nectarine. Right here is my Scarlet Beauty Plum, which also needs to um, go into dormancy. Now the uh, the nectarine kind of was going there all by itself. The hurricane helped it along, but um, I see this one held on pretty good to its leaves. So we're gonna help that along. And, um, and also I'm gonna do some cleaning out. I see a lot of branches touching each other. You guys, I, I was also thinking of something else as I was stripping this tree. Um, first of all, always pull your Spanish moss. If you have um, a lot of Spanish moss that fell out of your trees for the hurricanes or just is starting to grow in here, you don't want it to take root or establish, not root, um, like with roots, but you don't want it to establish a home here on your fruit trees. This is not the right place. It'll inhibit the photosynthesis of the of the fruit trees. Also another thing I was thinking about was that some of these trees will can I believe I mean that's what I thought when I read when I bought them. Some of them can give you a fall season of fruit and so um, you know if you have fruit on your trees I don't recommend you doing this right now. Wait until you've harvested all your fruit if your trees are older and then you have um, set a second round of uh, fruit for you in the fall. Yeah, just keep those. I don't know how common that is where we are, but that's something I did read about. Double check me on that. Fig trees are also on the list that can be stripped. Um, these look, leaves look a little rough perhaps that's rust but also you know I don't want to do a lot of this but, but I will say my uh, leaves look pretty rough after two hurricanes this fall so I am going to take some of the roughness out of it I will lollipop them and leave the tops I think this is, this looks a lot like what grows on plumeria which is rust can you see that Oh, maybe I'm taking off more than I thought I was going to. <laughs> but they look so about to die anyhow. <laughs> well, that's my jelly fig. Um, I already somewhat stripped uh, my mulberries a while ago, before the hurricane actually, because I was hoping to get some fruit on it. And then the hurricane kind of sealed the deal. There is a, there is a little bit of fruit on there. But I will tell you that's not worth it for me. That's probably more like for birds. Um, I have had wonderful winter mulberry fruits before. But um, yeah, 
this is not the year for it. So what I'm just going to do on this one, it has a lot of these little twiggy things. So I'm going to go through and cut and look at this one's crossing over. So this one's got to go. I'm just going to do a little bit of that. I do do that early. I did that, I think, in July. But anyhow, I'm going to do it again right now. So these are dwarf ever-bearing mulberries, but I think this applies to all mulberries. Um, if they get really tall, again, you don't have to do this. You absolutely do not have to do this. I do want to catch those that are crossing over for sure. I'm not going to spend any time stripping these. They're pretty much naked already. For papayas, you just leave them. Grumachami cherry, also I just leave her. I'm looking forward to fruit this coming spring. I had a little bit of blooming last year. And um, this is evergreen. Again, another kind of a waxy leaf. Um, yeah, so she, I believe this is tropical too. So anyhow, I don't expect her to lose any leaves. And this is the year I believe we're going to get fruit. Alrighty, I am in my food forest right now. The birds are very happy. My moringa is happy. I'm going to let that be. I'm not going to trim that. I'm actually not going to trim back the grapes this year as badly as I did it last year. And they're still so young. I'm just not going to take the time to do it. I'm going to, unless there's like a dangler, you know, like, like this one hanging down in my way. Okay, we can get rid of him, you know, that, something like that. But um, I'm, I'm definitely not going to make some hard pruning there choices. Oh, do you remember? Like uh, right before the holidays, we went through and cleaned all the vines up in here. Look at the elderberry I had to cut back, right? And then I stopped right about here and I never did cut back this elderberry. So now is the time. Again, not going to touch the, the star fruit. It is actually fruiting right now. It has a bunch of babies. I picked one actually through the, through the Thanksgiving week. But look, it's also put on little babies right there. Thank you to my friend Maddie for coming by and she found those. I know there was another one. I still haven't had time to really go look for it, but there's, oh, there it is. There it is. Another star fruit on there. So I'm not going to do anything with pruning that. Now over here, I got to show you the ugly side of my garden. So that hurricane was rough, rough, rough on my grapefruit tree. It's really rough. Can you see the, is the camera picking that up? It's stripped. It's stripped in a lot of spots. It's very sad. Some of it looks dead and dying. There's of course way too much Spanish moss in here. All that needs to come off. But I see some new growth too. Um, it dropped a good bit of its fruit right after Ian. Um, it, <laughs> Nicole, it only had a couple pieces left by the time uh, Nicole got here, Hurricane Nicole. This side's doing a little bit better. I think the wind must have been very bad from out of the east because that's also how my Barbados is leaning um, like it was pushed from the east. So uh, let's see, where's the other grape? This is like the only one remaining, which is really sad because um, I started off with a lot of fruit. I've actually eaten a bit of fruit too. But um, I picked it early. It wasn't as sweet as I had hoped for. So I'm going to have to go in here and make some hard choices. Um, I'm not going to bring you along for it. Essentially what I'm going to do is like take take a section. And we'll see if it's dead. See that? Now that's dead. There's no green in there. We're going to leave that to there. I'm going to cut all the, I don't know. This is my graft spot. Oh, that's got some green in there. Okay. 
Okay, I didn't get very far because I want to show you this. You see that right here? Those are buds. Those are buds, which won't make it if we get a freeze. So it's very uh, sad. The tree's trying to recover. It's very confused. It had 19 inches of rain, followed by an extreme cold snap down into 40 degree nights, back up to 70 degree nights. Now, and then a second hurricane, um, which was more of a wind event than rain, but we still got six plus inches of rain. And it's, it's fighting and struggling to come back. So um, the prune, I think, is important. You know, cleaning off the tree is important. Uh, I'm going to end up probably treating this one with some neem oil and uh, fungicide too. Maybe I have to bump up my whole schedule. Maybe February isn't right this year. You know, I, I need to talk to some of the other growers in the area and see what they're seeing on their trees because buds in November is not right. Yeah. I'm gonna turn the camera real quick. Look at the Turk's cap hibiscus. Just being all beautiful and everything. <laughs> all right, let me get back to pruning. And I kept getting hit in the back by my Mexican uh, sage. And she is pretty well spent. Sometimes I'll make a Christmas arrangement. But new growth is here. So since I'm here, it's not a tree. But I'm going to go ahead and cut back my Mexican sage too. And there you go. That's all ready now for spring growth in a whole year. I don't have to trim it again till next year. The peanut butter tree does not need to be trimmed today. Oh, I see it's got a peanut butter pe fruit right up there. Um, but anyhow, it had a really hard prune not that long ago. And then it stressed and fell over. We had to tie it back up after the hurricane. Uh, Ian, after Ian. So I'm going to go in here just real quickly, prune back my roses. And then we'll go on to the Persian lime and be done. Forgot. I forgot to totally mention the guava. So I am not trimming back the guava right now. I did that last winter and then I didn't get any blooms so uh, not that I know anything or any particular secrets but I'm just wondering you guys let me know if you're good guava growers but I think the guava must um, put blooms on old wood not new wood and so that I'm purposely leaving the old wood to see if I get blooms this year and I know it's a monster plant but we're gonna just try that see if I can get fruit again. I got fruit two years ago, uh, and then I got this big idea I was gonna prune it, prune it last winter, and then I got no fruit. And I, I'm just curious to see if that's the reason. Um, so uh, guava, and also I believe this is a, um, doesn't lose its leaves either. This is a, a evergreen, even though it's not the typical evergreen like a you know, Christmas tree that you think of, most people think of. Uh, the mango we're going to leave alone as well. Um, everything over here too. We are going to leave the bananas covered because that will help protect the base um, from like any potential frost or something. It'll, it'll give sort of like a natural blanket around your bananas. So I'm not touching the bananas. But here we are at the Persian lime. Let me show you what's going on. You see this? We're fruiting. We are fruiting right now. We had a rough year. Leaf miners always get in here. Um, but we have new growth. We have blooms. We have blooms. Blooms, blooms, blooms. So what's going to happen to this tree is going to be very minimal. Let me back up so you can see. The trunk is here. And the majority of the growth of this tree is over this way. And I don't want it to become so cumbersome that eventually the tree falls as it matures and grows. Um, this one is actually older than all my other trees. It lived in a pot for three years and stunted. So that may also be why it's not super tall Persian lime, but um, it got moved twice in one year. We didn't like where we put it in the food forest. We put it here and it's done spectacular in recovering. But again, all the growth is over here. So I'm just planning even though it breaks my heart and I have blooms over here, 
but I'm gonna take a lot of this weight that goes right to the ground off. And uh, I do have some pretty mature, nice looking limes over here. So I'm gonna pull those and um, just kind of give it a good chop in there. Uh, so, because it will, it will break my heart to chop off baby fruit. <laughs> so, what are you doing in there? You're not there. You're not supposed to be in there. That's a weed. Babies. Oh, y'all. My trees are so confused. So, did I say it or not? I might not have said it. So, uh, citrus are like a semi deciduous i don't know if that's exact classification but i will tell you just as being an owner oh did i say this this tree is um probably close to eight years old uh so anyhow um and it looks rough but it is happy and it produces very well and i do fertilize it uh three times a year at least maybe a fourth every once in a while but yeah my trees are so confused so i actually need to go get the loppers that is way bigger than i can prune with any hand shears so let me let me get the loppers does anybody else call their loppers cindy lopper <laughs> i'm just wondering if that's just me <laughs> okay y'all you can see the couple prunes i made that on the low branches and then this was the big one that had all the fruit on it so we'll just get that picked up and um, grab the fruit, bring it inside. If nothing else, I gotta be able to get the mower through here. That probably cleared two to three feet worth of ground. And overall, the plant will be healthier. I don't want it to be on the ground, you know? That's not too good. It is very heavy coming this way. Look, I can even see, gosh, I probably should take off more. The sun, the south is what all trees kind of like all my trees look better on their south side versus the north side the plumeria is pretty much touching the ground everything wants to come this way towards the sun that's just the way the world goes unless you're in the southern hemisphere and then all your stuff wants to go to the north <laughs> but um so i do have to be mindful of that and you should too uh when pruning and when you're just like growing fruit uh, be sure to get keep in mind that everything's going to want to go this way so uh, keep that all cleaned up there so, um, that's all this we're going to put in this video today and I hope you've got something out of it if I'm doing something really wrong you guys tell me um, I'm still learning at some of the stone fruit stuff um, but that was the advice I was given. Oh, I forgot to do the apples. I'll do the apples off the camera. Just know I'm doing the apples too. Um, and so anyhow, they don't have very much. They're kind of lollipops anyhow. And I did prune them, maybe was that two months ago before Hurricane Ian. And, um, cause I was hoping they would branch and fork out where I pruned them. That's why they got pruned then. But anyhow, so I'm just going to continue thinking and, and maybe pruning on this uh, Persian lime. But that's it for today. Take care, you guys. God bless. And I will see you again later this week. Bye-bye.